Hey, what's up everybody? This is James. Today I wanted to talk about something I think is very important. Um, and it has, it's completely related to doing gardening in a whole sense, and I can tell you about that more later. But today I wanted to talk about how governments steal from their people um, in a very subtle way called a wealth transfer. And um, I want to talk about the importance of financial literacy. That means understanding the history of money, understanding what money represents today, um, among other investments, and understanding how to protect ourselves in the future from this vicious circle that always takes place historically, um, where people have their labor undermined and they're, um, they're exploited by the official bureaucracies that are operating in their nations. So I'm going to demonstrate how this works. I got some silver money here. I got a dollar face value of 1964, 90% um, silver coins. I got 10 ounces sunshine minting, minting one ounce silver bullion coins. Beautiful coins, by the way. Get yourself some. So let's begin. Let me talk about how this works and put it in perspective for you because we've all been cleverly um, programmed to not think about this because after all the government does run the school system. So in 1964, first of all, 1964 the average wage was two dollars per hour, okay? So the average wage was two dollars per hour. You would go into the bank, say you had a dollar in silver coins like this. Here's one dollar face value. You go in the bank, you give this to the banker, and you'd get a receipt. Obviously it would have been for one dollar you'd get a receipt called currency in exchange for the money that you gave to the teller. And the receipt said something like silver certificate guaranteed one dollar, guaranteeing that somewhere in the government's hands is the actual silver to back up the, the currency note. Okay. So the average wage was two dollars per hour in 1964. And if you fast forward to 2017, let's say the average wage, let's say $12 per hour, okay? Well, I paid just recently for this $1 face value, 1964 quarters, $12. So today in 2017, takes twelve dollars of banknotes currency to buy one dollar of nineteen sixty four money you with me so you would in two thousand seventeen you're required if you, to earn twenty four dollars an hour just to earn the average living um, of a nineteen sixty four person and that's in purchasing power so it's all about purchasing power. So the key to understanding this whole thing is um, purchasing power. So today in 2017, I can get, I can buy five one ounce coins, five dollars in 1964 money, cost me $100 dollars in banknotes. So the currency is losing its value. What you work for, the legal tender, official legal tender, is depreciating. And the depreciation is seen in the rise of prices in houses and real estate, in gold and silver, and all sorts of other forms of money. And we say, oh, these things are getting more valuable. They're appreciating. But no, they never really change in value. They always have their same um, intrinsic value, their silver content. That's why for 5,000 years silver and gold has been the official legal tender of 
the world, there has been thousands upon thousands of different types of banknotes that different nations have used, which all go to zero. Okay, so the whole point is to undermine and exploit the wealth of the nation or nations or the whole world in today's sense and through the labor of the people you accumulate the most precious resources and obviously the most powerful banks and corporations are of all you know own and operate the most valuable resources in the world and then in turn you go around and you give them this piece of paper in exchange for their labor. So the labor is the key to all this. The, the money is depreciating, the purchasing power is being lost, your labor is being exploited, and that's one way that governments steal from their people. So I wanted to show you this. So this is the most, one of the more recent examples of how governments uh, cheat the people of their nations, more so um, the reserve banks that are established by um, all sorts of special interest groups all over the world in certain countries, designedly um, crash whole nations just so they can exploit the resources um, from that nation and, and divert them to the more ruling Western um, elite classes in Europe and America. So here's $10 trillion. This is 2008. This is real currency. $10 trillion. I bought $100 trillion, $1 billion. So I bought 10, $10 trillion bills, uh, Zimbabwe dollars, plus a $1 billion note off eBay for $12, for 12 Federal Reserve notes. I mean, these things are no different. Um, but a loaf of bread was like $16 million or or something in Zimbabwe in 2008. The whole thing is just a huge scheme and it's all just to, to milk the nation of the world. So, you know, it's all here. It's just, this is your labor and that's what it's about. And um, more so than ever now, people are circulating this as money and um, it's going to be the future. So, you got to get out of uh, the paper game and get into the real game if you want to want to prosper. Um, it's, but another good example, um, and I see it a lot everywhere, and we're all feeling it, is how you work harder and harder every year. You notice at the place of business you're at, major corporations especially, even farmers, you got to produce more and more every year. You're busting your ass more and more every year to produce more to meet new. Um, expectations because what you're getting in exchange for all your hard work for what you're getting in exchange for all your labor is losing value year after year so it takes more labor to buy the same amount of goods as it did years prior so the key to, to changing this paradigm is that the producers learn how to exchange once again the local producers, not just the big banks of the world, because they're already doing it, because they know how, they keep it for themselves, but they learn how to exchange this with the consumers, okay? And when the consumers wake up again, hopefully, and most of them are, and start using this as legal tender and exchanging with the producers, then the prosperity will be restored to the everyday person. But because of financial illiteracy, which you can, I would say, is most designedly uh, on purpose left out of our, our public education to uh, make us easy pre prey. And so we live in this system where we work, work, and work and uh, earn these paper things, but these paper things are, are just that paper. And so our labor is lost. All our labor is lost. All your energy, it's, it's, all, it's all gone. Through gaining an understanding of history, um, the history of money and currency, we can learn to protect our labor because you never get those hours of your life back and store it and, and store your labor, hours of labor in one of these so later you can go on and trade it for something of actual value besides more of these you could get a, a home 
You could get all sorts of other commodities in exchange. Um, but the point is, this is a constantly diminishing in value exponentially. It'll go to zero, and every every paper asset based on this kind of stuff, and that's all digital and not really in your hands and in the hands of software programmers that you just see it on the computer screen all that stuff will just instantly vanish and um, the loss of value in this stuff is picked up here so you can protect your labor and you can uh, you know protect your future by investing in in uh, money that is appreciating or will always store value Technically, this isn't legal tender anymore. This is. But unofficially, since 2008 and since the last 30 years, people and mints across the world have been reintroducing this into circulation for the public to purchase as an investment um, to protect themselves from the decline of the inevitable paper currency, fiat currency. Um, so now more than ever, silver and gold and copper is being minted um, and it's being sold to the public and the public's recirculating it. And it's official, it's legal tender, always has been. It never won't be. But by law, some, some bullshit law, we've all been forced to work with this and transact in this. But I can go to any coin shop with this, just like the bank used to do, I can trade it for this, and then later on, if I need need to, or I want to sell it to make a profit in these, I can go back to the bank, uh, to the coin shop, and exchange this for this. It's it's always going to be that way. It cannot be that way. Um, and the whole point is to store your labor in these, but not to trade them in the future for all these because one day you'll get a million of these for one of these or, or for like say a thousand of them but that's not the point because at that moment in time you're gonna need a hundred thousand of these to buy a loaf of bread so when it all is said and done and the whole scheme collapses you'll be able to go around and make private transactions with your neighbors for property and they'll take this stuff and it'll be a lot, lot cheaper. And historically, it's due to happen. And so, you should be able to get a single family home for a few hundred ounces of silver. Because when it's all said and done, those few hundred ounces of silver are going to equal hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, you know, when it all comes crashing down. And that's, that's one extreme of it all. Um, and it's it's a huge opportunity to protect your labor and and learn how to use it to trade apples for oranges because we've all been taught to trade apples for apples our whole lives but when you learn to trade apples for oranges you see a whole different story you see the rise and fall of one asset to another and it's intentional it's it's completely intentional that this loses and diminishes value over time so that the ruling class can exploit as much labor from the people in the nation as possible. That's the whole objective. To finance war, essentially, because war is the biggest business. So this is, this is going to disappear in a short time, just like all the others. And um, that's what they're getting prepared for. That's why the United States may, that's why all these mints on the world are making this stuff again in introducing it into circulation. This is money. This is real money. This is paper. This is fucking paper. Has this and a one dollar bill side by side are no different except for the the denominations of ink on the piece of paper. It's the same amount of resources. But you take a hundred of these, stack them up, and then you got one of these you see, wow, there's there's a huge difference in value here. Look at this content. Let's say there's a hundred there. This is God's money. This is what it refers to. 
just scales. This is why we're, we have this. And um, it'll always be an exchange much better than this. And it'll always increase in value. And one day, one of these is going to buy you so much that you'll be, you'll be comfortable. And you'll be able to protect yourself. That is, you don't, that is, you know, as long as you don't, in the end, trade it for more of this garbage. Because that's what you're going to want to do. But it's, you're going to have wheelbarrows of garbage, just like they did in the, in the Depression and, um, and all over the country. What is debt? Have you ever thought about what debt actually is? So if your labor, if what you earn in exchange for your labor represents that hour of your life, which you'll never get back, um, then... When you borrow money, what you are essentially doing is borrowing hours of your future away to somebody else. And actually, you're paying more hours of your future in the end because you're paying interest, or also known historically as usury, which is how all great nations have been destroyed in the world is through the lending practices of usury. And in our nation, we have a 10% uh, reserve ratio on all the money print, all the currency printed, excuse me, so all the currency the United States borrows from the Federal Reserve is due back plus interest, 30% interest. So the key to a successful nation and one of the keys and to prosperity is sound money system, which we don't have. And with my basic demonstration here, I'm hoping I've given you an idea of how it appears like people make more money today than they ever did before, but actually they can buy, they buying less goods and services than they used to with, with more banknotes, you know, because the banknote, they you always require more banknotes to buy the same goods and services you bought in the past, because that's the nature of fiat currency, to constantly lose value. And the loss of value is going to the, the clever people who are operating the whole scheme that are holding on to all this. And I don't mean to say that's me, I just, there's a lot of us that caught on to it. And this is how it works. You can find this information out everywhere. Research it on the internet. It's just, it's fact. Once you take off your blinders, crawl out from under the rock you've been living under your whole life, you can see that debt is slavery, um, in that the more you work for this, the less you can buy later on. So, you know, it, they've, they've just gone over the top with all of this and they've created all these digital instruments called investments that people have now and they log on their computer and they see this software program and it's on a television screen it says their name it's got their account information it shows them how many digits they got in their bank account you know and these people can't even touch it you you get penalized you get all these fees you get reprimanded for for trying to get at your own private property and then people say well you know it's for retirement and this and that and and all in the meantime, the huge companies that you're constantly giving your labor to in the form of these are taking those investments and they're making millions on them. And they're putting that in their pocket, driving around their Ferraris every day, living a high life. And you got to wait till you're 70 to, to pull it out of the bank. About those people. The world GT GDP was $55 trillion in 2013. And the world debt was $190 trillion. In the last 100 years, most of the countries of the world have been forced onto these paper systems. And their resources have been diverted through war, the biggest profiteering business in the world, to the most powerful elite Western institutions, banks and governments, on purpose. And that means the United States people themselves. They have been, they have, they are being, we are being all the time, every day, while your money sits in the bank, it's being used to undermine this and undermine, most importantly, your labor. Um, and one day you'll find that you can hardly buy anything with this. Ask yourself, how many hundreds do you go through a month? It's crazy. Think about it. Paper, 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 paper. 
fiat currency, money, real money, money, listen, listen to this, hear that, that's the sound of my labor, it's all stored in there, so that's all for today, I want to talk about that, in the next video I'm going to talk about how this relates to gardening, um, so I know, I hope I gave you some insight into how um, governments steal from their people and um, how you can protect yourself from this theft and what you need to do to put yourself on the good side of the world's greatest wealth transfer that is happening right now as we speak. Greatest wealth transfer in the world is transferring the wealth of the everyday average Joe into the pockets of all the people that hold the actual money. Don't you know the golden rule? He who owns the gold makes the rules. Educate yourself. Like and subscribe. Stay tuned. I got more to share with you. Take care.